In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Welcome back to our series of doing the prayer, Our Father, where we're taking down each section of the prayer and we're expanding on it and hopefully taking our time so we can understand what these prayers mean. It's important to pray, but it's even better to understand the words that we are praying. And we began by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. That's what we're going to talk about today. Thy kingdom come. Everybody say it with me. Thy kingdom come. We say it all the time. But how many of us really mean it? We say it. But do we want it to happen? Because when we're praying, thy kingdom come, that means that we want the king, God, to come. How many of us are prepared to receive a king? Think back to your childhood. When your parents told you that a guest was coming, what do you do? You prepare the house. By what? Cleaning up. You wash the dishes. You 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 uh, move all the clothing into your bedroom, right? And then you organize all the papers and all this stuff to make your house presentable. For whom? For the guest. For the guest. That's what we do here on earth. How much more should we prepare our hearts to receive the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords? You know, when we pray that kingdom come, what we're really praying is... Let judgment day come. Because when Christ comes for a second time, we know what's going to happen. We're going to stand for judgment. How many of us are prepared for that? We pray this prayer, but how many of us are really ready to receive our king? Before he comes, we should be sure to get rid of anything in our hearts that don't belong there. True story. True story. Uh, I just want to say I'm blessed. Yes, I am. Uh, you know, right now, I'm using an iPhone to record this. I got an iPhone. Yes, I'm an iPhone junkie now. If you text me, it comes out blue, it's no more green. That's an iPhone joke for all my friends. But before, I had Samsung, and when I was using the phone... I got a little ping, ping, ping. And then it was just like uh, this notification saying my memory was full. I'm like, what do you mean my memory is full? So I started going through the phone to delete any files that was taking up space. And I discovered like videos that I recorded like three, four years ago. Like I had forgotten about these videos. Like I, I don't, I didn't even know they existed, but they were taking up so much space. And it wasn't until I got rid of them that I was able to make room for the new material that I wanted to record. I'm afraid some of us are like that today. I fear that we are harboring material, sometimes even in our un un unconscious. We we're not even aware of it, but we are harboring things that are unnecessary, but that are taking up so much space in our life. It's in our hearts. It's in our mind. But until we take the time to examine ourselves, we won't even know that it's there. But we must be sure to get rid of these unnecessary things that we are harboring so that we can make room for our king who's coming. But the sad part is, some of the things that we've harbored is not just unnecessary. Sometimes they're even harmful things. They're wicked things. They're things that are dangerous that we must immediately get rid of. Recently, we all witnessed our dear brother, George Floyd, being pinned down on the floor by a police officer for eight minutes while he was crying out, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. The last three minutes, he was unconscious. And I'm sure, just like me, you've asked, like, how? How is it possible 
for this police officer for eight minutes to have his knee on his neck while he's screaming, I can't breathe. How is it possible for a human being to do this? He was a child of God. This man was a child of God. How do you do that to another human being? I'm sure we've all asked this. And the answer is because his heart was filled with hatred. Whether he knew it or not, hatred had taken space in his life. And because he was unable to take this out of his heart, it manifested itself into this action. If we were honest with ourselves, if we take the time to examine ourselves, we too have harbored hatred, some form of prejudice to some group or another. If it's not a group, it's a person. Let's examine our hearts. We have filled up our heart with hatred. If we have filled up our hearts with hatred, how can we receive the king? We have to purify ourselves through confession. We have to truly go to our God and surrender our soul. We have to be prepared to receive the king. We are witnessing the country, our country, go in chaos. Why? Because it's showing that as a society, there are still things that we need to get rid of. Thy kingdom come. Yes, let it come. But first, let us be prepared to receive our king. So these type of wicked acts will not take place any longer. Whatever group we are in or we think that we're in, it's not about taking favoritism over one person over the next. It's about as human beings, we've got to learn how to love one another. We started this series by saying, our father. We're all praying to the same God. Our father, our God. If we're saying our, that makes us a family. If he is our father, we are all brothers and sisters. How can we do this to each other? We must take out the hatred from our hearts so that we can make room for our king, so that when he comes, he can take us to the kingdom of heaven. Thy kingdom come. Next time we will look at thy will be done. We pray that the family of George Floyd will have enough strength to get through this difficult time we pray that uh, God is receiving the soul of George Floyd, his, his child. And we also pray that this country, this world receives peace and that we are able to really honestly examine our soul so that we can prepare our hearts to receive the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Thy kingdom come.